Okay, so I've made a lot of serious videos recently. So it's time for me to sit back, relax, and laugh at some god-awful modern art. Now, if you want a more in-depth explanation about why modern art is a massive scam, watch my previous videos linked in the description. But to summarize, artists use obscurantism to dress up what is essentially inane tat in flowery, pretentious language to attach a facsimile of meaning to it. This intimidates people out of recognizing most modern art for what it is, inane tat, for fear of appearing uncultured or ignorant. Self-proclaimed artists also vastly increase their chances of having their inane tat featured in galleries by imbuing it with a social justice message. Anti-colonialism, anti-racism, anti-sexism, anything will do. The entire industry is a price-fixing scam between galleries and collectors to keep values artificially inflated to facilitate tax avoidance and money laundering. And the obliteration of objective beauty standards is part of a social engineering program to force feeders nihilistic relativism. Got it? Got it. Now with that out of the way, let's have a gander at some absolute sh**. There's an upcoming show at MoMA which I'm really excited about. It's called Wall Floor Positions. So wall floor positions, surely that's something more than just a bloke up against a wall taking different positions, right? Wrong. Bruce Nauman has spent half a century inventing forms to convey both the moral hazards and the thrill of being alive. Employing a tremendous range of materials and working methods, he reveals how mutable experiences of time, space, movement and language provide an unstable foundation for understanding our place in the world. But to be kind to Nauman, he was blinded by poking himself in his own eye. So he mustn't have known how bad this looked. I know, my mistake. That was art too. I haven't anticipated a piece of modern art performance this much since that fat woman twerked her ass for Black Lives Matter. But then again, neither of those could live up to the emotional journey I was catapulted on by this tour de force. <laughs> Smearing yourself with fake blood and having a vertical epileptic fit also appears to be enough to pass for art. As does spazzing out in a trendy basement. See, this is why the terrorists hate us. Look at all these lemons sat there all smug and pretentious acting like they've got a fucking clue what's going on. Listen to how The Guardian describes this one. Bonnet Newman is well worth $43.8 million. Great art is essentially priceless. The highest price paid by the most well-heeled collector is only a fraction of its true value. And Newman is a great artist. Quite the build-up, eh? Must be a jaw-dropper, right? Oh! Yeah. A single white line divides a flat expanse of blue. It seems to rip open the universe, a crack in space and time, like mappings of energy pulses or avant-garde musical notation. Sure, Jan. The only thing being ripped apart here is the idiot's bank account who shelled out $43 million on something that looks like a table tennis table with its net removed. But wait, you haven't seen what The Guardian describes as Newman's masterpiece. Wait for it. Yeah. Masterpiece. It's no different really from meeting another person, Newman said of his masterpiece. One has a reaction to the person physically. Yeah. My physical reaction to this would be to tear it apart in a fit of blind rage. Meaning and dream collide hypnotically in his art. His vertical line, full of portent, but not portentous, as skeptics might claim, speaks of creation, God, and the human urge to draw a line. Yet this primeval mark slices through a trancing colour that draws you in at a deep psychic level, irrationally, like falling into deep water. Sure, Jan. You're talking about a f King line, not the Sistine Chapel. Falling into water would be a preferable activity than having to stare at this insipid piece of debris for more than five seconds. Art like that is a bargain at any price. $43.8 million. Bargain? No! Here's one I personally took inside Tate Britain. Yeah, keep looking, dear. You still won't find any meaning. Toilet brush cleaners attached to beheaded IKEA light stands. Stunning and brave. And what about this? Polystyrene and packaging airbags. Now, I know that plastic in the world's oceans is a huge problem, but surely it's worth a couple more dolphins dying to save humanity from ever having to encounter this collage of trash ever again. A giant whale in Utrecht, Netherlands, made of plastic trash. Yeah, get back in 
the sea. Talking of trash, I've covered stories before where cleaners in modern art galleries mistake exhibits for junk and accidentally throw them away. Well, get this. At a gallery in Holland, an art installation of umbrellas and assorted sh** that looks like it came from a building site was completely cleared and dumped in a local landfill. <laughs> At first, the gallery and the artist thought that it had been stolen, but then the man responsible came forward and said he'd cleared and dumped it because he thought it was litter and unsafe for children. Listen to how the artist responded. I always work from objects that people throw away. I try to give them a new life through my art. That this is now seen as litter makes me sad. Bruh. Yeah, mate, listen. Dumping a load of crap on the floor isn't art. It's crap. And crap deserves to be in a landfill. I think this is like modern art. Because you can't really see what it is. It made me feel sad. This is literally just three binders from the 90s inside a glass display case. Don't even try to argue that this has any meaning or value. It needs to be thrown on a bonfire. Drawings by Wes Mills. Although my drawings are inspired from daily experiences and my belief in things unknown to me, they are often void of ideas. Thank you for your honesty. On first viewing, Sugimoto's photograph appears to be empty. A void. It is only after careful looking that the subtle Ionian seascape emerges. Don't worry, YouTube hasn't crashed. I'm genuinely displaying right now what they claim isn't an empty void. Yeah, seems quite empty and voidy to me. How many times have you been to a modern art exhibit and said or had somebody say to you, what's so great about that? I could do that. What they're in effect saying is, that doesn't inspire me. Show me something that I couldn't do. If you walked into a place like the Sistine Chapel and looked up at Michelangelo's masterpiece, you would never hear somebody say something like, meh, I could do that. Instead, we stare up at it until our necks hurt, wondering how another human being, a creature with the same starting point as you and I, could produce something so incredible. Michelle Obama's portrait was revealed. Looks like the winner was selected from entries on deviant art. Truly stunning, the woman transforming stretch marks and period stains into art. Yeah, that's a lot of things, but none of them are stunning or art. Gross, retch inducing, and er, uh, get that away from my f***ing face. Yes. Stunning? No. Art? No. Some f Gimp decided to ruin Hyde Park for the entire summer by dumping this huge block of pink Lego in the middle of it. There's more artistic merit in this hairstyle, but that was nothing compared to the desecration of Carcassonne Castle in France. The country's second most visited tourist site after the Eiffel Tower and a UNESCO World Heritage Site was turned into a bad LSD trip after it was defaced with giant yellow circles. Like seriously, what the f***? have you done? Thousands of furious locals who were not even consulted signed a petition demanding the circles be removed. Desecrating historic art is not art, said one. It completely ruins this beautiful city, added another. But the artist, Felice Verini, dismissed their concerns by saying they were, quote, deeply attached to their heritage. Like, that's a bad thing. And did you think I'd forgotten to include the latest horror shows brought to us by modern architecture? You know me better than that. Look at this proposed abortion of a building in London, plonked on top of another decent-looking building, like the architectural version of the Demon Incubus. Look at this atrocity opposite Aldgate Station. Yeah, again, a monster of modernity, with barbed fangs looking like it's about to sink its teeth into the nice traditionalist building it looms over. But what's worse, being eaten to death or being f***ed to death by a giant glass dildo. That fate awaits London's skyline with a 1,000 foot high tulip tower, another gigantic monument to ego, designed by Foster and Partners. The same firm currently smothering the stark beauty of Battersea Power Station to death by suffocating it with jagged carbuncles like this I saw. But seriously, what is it with dumping giant sex toys in the middle of major cities? Stop! A recent poll found that 87% of the British public preferred historical architecture over modernist or brutalist designs. Oh, but don't dare criticise it because that's hateful! Yes, they're now claiming that insulting concrete piles of elephant droppings like this deformity is hate speech. Having a basic grasp of aesthetic beauty makes you alt-right. It makes you a Nazi. Because in 2019, everything makes you a Nazi. Now I know I'm ranting, but this doesn't mean that there isn't some good modern art being produced. If you look carefully enough, 
It's everywhere. Owen Schroyer here for InfoWars.com, and I want to tell you guys about a great product that we have, and it is the Knockout Sleep Aid Formula. Now, I've got my knockout right here, and we're going to take it, and we're going to look at the actual results of the Knockout Sleep Formula in real time. So let me take my knockout first. But while we're waiting to see the effects of the knockout... I've got some very, very, very important news that I want to get to. InfoWars Life wants to bring you a sleep support formula that goes above and beyond other leading brands at an affordable price. Get the sleep you deserve and experience the power of knockout. Head on over to InfoWarsLife.com and say goodbye to fatigue. That's InfoWarsLife.com.